Okay, uh, we're back. It's the next day. I'm going to show you this little um, mixture I came up with that's uh, given me the, the final color that I'm after that I'm pretty happy with. Um, biggest part of the product that I, or part of the equation I'm using is this um, pigment made by Woodland Scenics. Uh, it's raw umber in color. Make sure you give it a good shake. Make sure it's mixed up really well. And I'm just using this old 1x4 here to mix things up on. Works good as a little palette, if you will. And I'll just put out a fair amount on the board. A little bit to start with there. And then the other part of it I've, believe it or not, added in to mix into it to darken it up a little bit is some more of the Ebony Stain by Minwax. I accidentally just stumbled upon it, believe it or not, dropped some in here one day and off a brush I was using. I just used this wider brush um, to paint the ties with this mixture. It's the same thing, it's another just cheap artist brush I picked up, I think again, at, at Hobby Lobby. Um, just get a little bit of the stain onto your brush out of the can and I just come back to this mixture and shake some in there. Just till I get about what I think is the decent amount. You don't want to put too much in. Darken it up a little bit more than what you really need. Then I just use the same brush and just start mixing this all up until it's well blended. Believe it or not, it, it will mix will not really separate on you. Um, and again, with the fluorescent lighting I have down here in the basement right now, it might not be showing up very well as to exactly the color of this. I can only think of describing it as a greenish, brownish color. Mostly brown, it's just Again, part of the fluorescent lighting in here. But um, it's the color that I'm after. It's going to work. Um, it's not really showing up very well in here, unfortunately, but it's just a little bit of the pigment and then some of that black stain mixed in. Um, just get it all mixed together thoroughly. And then load up the brush and we'll start applying it to the ties in just a moment. Okay, here's the area of the ties um, that I did a few days ago. Again, you can see we've got the black uh, ebony stain I applied in the center of the ties that's dried overnight. Um, it's all ready to go. If it's not quite dry, you'll feel a little tackiness to it or a little bit of stickiness. Anyway, like I said, just load up your brush with uh, this little concoction and just begin applying it to the tops of the ties and as well as between them because again, you don't want to miss, miss part of these, uh, miss any of these areas of these ties because it will definitely show through when you're doing your ballasting. I just like to give it a nice heavy coat and be and I'm being very generous with this um, definitely not applying it too thin in, in any way I want to make sure I get some good coverage on there so I am just slopping it on basically I'm not being too concerned with um, anything dripping off or running anywhere I'm going to do some more of the area here and what's nice about this <clears throat> is using this pigment what starts to happen as it dries is just what it'll do and it's just ever so slightly it'll actually 
kind of take on the appearance initially when you're brushing it on like it's beating up, uh, much like water on a freshly waxed car will do. Uh, yet when it dries, it will have a very, very matte or dull finish to it. Um, and the only thing that's really interesting about it that you, that you may see is a little bit of this gray underneath that we did initially will just be starting to peek through in just the, the tiniest of little places here. And to me, it just always kind of resembled um, when tie the ties are, they're just really starting to get some age into them. And the, um, the high points in the grains of the wood, if you will, are starting to starting to gray a little bit. Those very edges in the grain are just starting to get bleached out. Um, I, like I said to me, I just, I thought that was an interesting little look and pretty happy with that. So again, just put it on and don't be shy. What I like is, uh, it's a very cheap, inexpensive, simple way to go about getting the um, desired look that I'm after. And that's what it's all about, is getting the look that you're after, whatever that might be. Um, I found that once I'm done, and this step that I'm doing now, once it dries, which again, I usually let go overnight, um, just to ensure it's completely dried before I even think of coming back and starting to lay track. Um, is it, uh, it ends up with that final, dull, well-used, um, mainline look. Um, I didn't want anything too haggard and beat up. Um. And I didn't want that showroom new fresh section of track that had just been put down for, on the main line. I wanted something that had been there for a while, uh, but yet still had plenty of years left in it. Um, and this little mixture I'm using, you know, again, it all comes down to your personal preferences, but uh, I gotta say, for for myself, I'm I couldn't be happier with it. I just accidentally playing. I was playing around with the pigments when I was first starting to put ties down and I thought well let me just try these these pigments I have and that raw umber it was kind of close to what I was after but like I said it was a little too dark so I was trying to come back and brush over a little bit of stain of that ebony stain on top of just the pigment on top of these ties and I dropped some in and went, hmm, well, let's see if it blends, and mixed it up, it blended, and away I went, and it started giving me that look I was after. Um, as you can see, I just did a small area here, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit, see if it'll pick up some of what I'm doing. It's kind of hard to really get a good look at it, um, but as you can see, right in this area here. These ties I've, I've already done. And you can see how that black um, coloring of the ebony stain is kind of showing through that a little bit. Now when this finally dries, this top coat, that uh, it'll uh, again have that nice dark matte brown finish that I was after and um, comes out looking again like I said really uh, really really close to what I was after. Um, this is just a video, like I said, that I was doing just to demonstrate um, my little technique. Um, nothing unique or special about it. Just uh, common things you could easily pick up at any store. Um, and that's how, how I did it. Just start playing around with things uh, until you find something that works for you and that gives you that final look you're after. Um, in the next shot here, I'm going to show you... Uh, section of ties that I did a little while back that's completely dried and everything like that just so you can get a good look at that. Okay, here's the section of ties I did a few months ago actually and um, 
got the camera in my hand now, so it's not quite as stable as the tripod, obviously, but this was the um, an area of my layout that's going to lead to a cooling area, and uh, the camera hopefully is picking up some of the subtleties and the variations uh, in the coloring of these ties. Um, and again, this was uh, the look I was really going for. Uh, I came very close to what I was hoping to achieve. And um, that's pretty much it. I definitely am not the videographer or the movie maker, but uh, did the best I could just to try to show all of you what what my techniques were and what I did and how I got there. Um, I'm going to come in a little close here just on some of these ties so you can hopefully really get a good look at what I did. And then here this area kind of demonstrates what I was talking about with a little bit of that gray showing through and this tie right basically in the center of the screen. Up close it kind of tends to look um, just splotchy, but if you pull away from it a little bit, to me anyhow, you start getting a little bit of that appearance of the gray beginning to come out into, in the wood and the ties. Uh, just starting to reflect some of the age that you might find in uh, ties, certainly in certain locations and stuff like that. But these are just some more of the raw areas. Um, some more of the uh, work that I did in the same method that I just showed. Um, I'm very happy with how it came out. I love it. And, um, and again, remember, there is no right or wrong way. You know, we're all in this hobby together and we all have great ideas and ways to go about things. And that's what makes it great. You get to share those ideas and techniques with each other and, and uh, come up with new ones and new ideas and new ways of doing things. I hope if you watch this that you enjoyed it and pick something out of it. Or, you know, even if you sat there and watched it and thought, well, what the heck's he doing that for? Hey, please share it with me. I'm, I want to hear ideas and everybody's thoughts and what you're doing. And I put together a couple more little videos on how I did some other things. Um, a little sneak peek of that. I don't know how well it'll show up. That's how I'm getting that rusty look on those two ties right there by the fish plate. I uh, found that this is a good little way to uh, just add a little bit more detail in terms of the coloring and so forth. Uh, that'll probably be the next little video I put together and hope you enjoyed this. This one's a little bit longer than I wanted it to be, but fortunately, like some of us, I suffer from talking too much. So on that note, I'm going to end this and say thank you for watching.